Who's responsible for killing protesters in Cairo with poisonous tear gas and live rounds? The military rulers continue to reject any involvement and despite growing public pressure, they are yet to stay in power. Stay with News Analysis for more. Egyptian security forces chase away protesters in the capital Cairo. Mass protests against the ruling military council have entered their fourth day. The protests turned violent after security forces resorted to a harsh crackdown to silence angry youths who want the ruling junta to hand over power to a civilian rule. Security forces have used poisonous tear gas against the protesters, which are said to have been supplied by the U.S. It's unclear who has ordered the use of poisonous tear gas on demonstrators. The crackdown has left dozens of protesters dead in the past four days. The killings are just a reminder of the Iron Fist crackdown by the regime of former President Hosni Mubarak that finally sealed his own fate. We are not demanding more than a deadline for the handover of power. The demonstrators have not been intimidated by police's use of force. More and more protesters are packing Cairo's Liberation Square, the cradle of the revolution. The protests have spilled over into other key areas, like the port city of Alexandria. The junta has been facing protests ever since it took power after Mubarak's downfall. The head of the military council has said in a televised speech that the junta does not intend to rule Egypt, but the protesters won't believe the comments until power is handed over to a civilian government. The political powers should speak. There is only one way to please the people, and that is that parliamentary elections are held on time and a date for the presidential election is said to win over public opinion because this military rule is not welcome and has to end quickly to hand over the power to an elected civilian government. Well, joining me now live from London is Mr. Mohammed Ghanem with the Muslim Brotherhood. Thank you so much for being with us, sir. And also with us live from Beirut is Mr. Jamal Wakim, political analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. My first question goes to Mr. Ghanem in London. Mr. Ghanem, at least 36 people, according to the latest reports, have been killed. It looks like, however, no one is taking responsibility. Who is responsible for those who have been killed? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The situation in general, nobody would agree for or accept the violence, and the, the result for the people uh, died for that cause, or whatever cause it is, uh, we all feel sorry about it. But it is not wise, uh, neither it's a politically correct, to start to blame somebody now. Uh, Egypt in this transmission period have set some rules. They given these uh, accusation to the court and uh, I hope and uh, I believe the court will investigate and uh, the result of investigation would point out who's responsible. Doesn't matter uh, if it's a military or the police or some uh, the previous regime, they all, uh, a lot of factors in the Egyptian political life at the moment. But let us uh, see the court and the uh, investigation and whatever the result mm. should be accepted. Right, uh, Mr. Vakim in Beirut, Mr. Qanem is saying that it's not politi politically correct or wise right now to start to blame uh, people for carrying out the killings. What eyewitnesses are telling us, what people on the streets have been telling uh, reporters and the media is that they're seeing military police fire at them, that tear gas and poisonous tear gas has been used. Hospital sources saying the victims died after inhaling poisonous gas. Now the question is where has this gas come from? Who ordered forces to use it? What do you think? Definitely it's the military council because the military council is in charge of the country and it's the one ordering the police and the army uh, at the same time to crack down on the demonstrators because they don't want to hand over power back to civilians. I think that they tried 
they are trying to uh, get a puppet ruler uh, to serve as a, a veil for the true military rule for the country. And that's why uh, I think the demonstrators were aware of this fact. That's why they went to the streets in protest against uh, uh, this attempt. And that's why they were calling for handing over power to civilians because they don't want to have a military rule, which is an extension of Mubarak's rule. Right. Mr. Khanem, speaking about then who is responsible and who has been carrying out, you say that maybe this is not the time to do that and maybe we should have to wait for an investigation for a court. Now, why is poisonous gas being used in the first place? A lot of people may be asking now who gave the orders for that gas to be used. And uh, of course, we know that the people will definitely want justice. These are the same people who came out and protested against Hosni Mubarak and wanted ju justice for what Hosni Mubarak did to them. And and they're seeing this happen again. They're on the streets and they're saying that this is what the military rulers are doing to us again. And we, ju we just don't want justice for Mubarak now, but for the military police for doing what they d Mubarak was doing to us. I mean, Amnesty International has just come out and said th that it's accused Scarf of brutality, in some cases exceeding that uh, former president, Hosni Mubarak, and I'm quoting here. So will you think that that investigation can be credible, that, th that per those who ordered this would eventually be brought to justice? Well, this investigation must be credible, and uh, there is a lot of uh, Egyptian people who is honest enough and qualified enough to pin pinpoint to exactly who is responsible about this. Either somebody has given the order, or whoever used the actual act of killing, or uh, whatever violent uh, use. This brutality, we all agree, should not take place. Uh, the, the, the right of the people to demonstrate is uh, guaranteed by the Constitution. Well, isn't and it the, obvious, the, though, Mr. Ghanem, that the military police and the military rulers carried out the uh, crackdown on the protesters? Yeah, but when you say military or the police, who is from the, 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 the military or the police uh, giving the order? And who... Uh, from the member of the police or the military has carried out the, the killing. This issue is complicated enough and the rumors were just given general uh, opinion like this does have a negative effect. We will all condemn what is happening and we all condemn the violence and we have condemned the, the killing, but let us wait see the investigation, mm. put it in front of the court and decide, let the, the court decide who's responsible. Right, Mr. Wakim, let's turn to the speech that was made earlier on by Mr. Tantawi himself. Now, one of the first remarks that he made in that speech was that no part of the military fired on the people. He completely denied that. He said that the military are there to protect the people and we have not fired at the people. He was also voicing concerns about people creating violence against the police forces. First of all, how do you see that response coming from Tantawi at this critical juncture? What kind of a response do you think it is? What message is it trying to give the people? First of all, if uh, uh, Tantawi uh, says that it's not the police who fired or it's not the army that fired on uh, the demonstrators. How would he know if there is no investigation yet? I think that this issue cannot be dealt with uh, 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 in a technical way. It should be dealt with in a more uh, political way. I think that the demonstrators went against the military, the rule of the military junta now, and they want to hand over power to civilians and it was the orders of the military by the military council to crack down on demonstrators to, uh, in order to uphold power. I think that so far the responsibles for this violence going on in the streets, it's the uh, Egyptian army, the leadership of the Egyptian army, the military council, and it, this will have serious repercussions on the unity of the uh, army itself and the, uh, it will have a repercussions 
on the political developments in the near future. Right, Mr. Ghanem, another announcement that was made today by Mr. Tantawi was that there's going to be a new government, uh, that uh, he's accepted the resignation of Prime Minister Islam Sharaf's government, and there's also been talk of a national salvation government by the state media in Egypt. Now tell us what that national salvation government is going to be and how would it differ from the government of Islam Sharaf in terms of meeting the demands of the protesters? Well, for me personally, I wouldn't see the changing the government will make any difference. Uh, maybe because the people frustrated and uh, the lack uh, of response to the people wish has made him announce accepting the resignation. But anyway, he accepts the resignation in condition for the government to carry on its work until they forming the mm -hmm. other uh, government. That means even Mr. Tantawi doesn't have a concept for what next government will be. Nobody know, and I will uh, see there will there won't be any common agreement to any government that's coming, because still the government will be uh, pointed out by the military. And that itself is a, is a default. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the issue now is the uh, election. The only way to solve that problem is to, ha to have the election as is scheduled and let the people have the true representative. Then those representatives will make the people feel confident on them and they will carry up the job. Right. Without that, I mm -hmm. cannot see any way out. Okay, I'm just hearing that Mr. Yahya Ghanem is a journalist who's joining us now uh, from Cairo. Let's get his views on what's happening in Egypt as well. Now, Mr. Yahya Ghanem, let's have your views. First of all, I want to have your reaction to the comments that have been made by General Tantavi today when he says that the presidential election is going to have a specific time frame, when he says that he's going to go ahead with elections as scheduled. Uh, our guest here was just saying that the way forward would be for people to participate in that poll and the poll should be held. What do you think? Yes, uh, if, we, if you're talking about uh, the speech of uh, Field Marshal Tantawi, uh, well, personally speaking, I, I think it came a little bit late uh, and uh, a little bit little than what expected. Uh, we all expected uh, Field Marshal uh, Tantawi to announce the formation of an, uh, a, a government uh, with full capacities, uh, not just limited capacities. Uh, it's a full mandated government. Uh, uh, well, he stopped short of saying that. Also, we, we expected, or the majority expected, uh, Field Marshal Tantawi uh, to uh, declare uh, some, some other measures and some other procedures, to take some other procedures. And especially with, uh, with all the economic uh, issues left behind and also the political ones. So I, I believe that that's how I describe it. Uh, a little bit late, a little bit little, and that's why... Uh, most of us, we are waiting for a complimentary, something to complement the speech. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, nobody knows. Right, and, and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ghanem, also if I could put this question to you as well. What do you think, however, has changed now for the Egyptian people with the bloodshed that has happened, with this extreme anger now at the military rulers? Will be, people be prepared to go ahead with the polls, will be, people be okay now with the military rulers still there? For sure, the Could people the feeling last part bad of your question, about please? the people, when, when, when the bloodshed, that, that make people more frustrated, more upset, and everybody agree that. But the thing is, that the reality is, this military or the military council is always lagging behind the people's wishes. And the, this lagging behind, plus the mistrust between the people and the other authority, which is the police, is, is a very uh, dangerous combination. 
This combination can burst out any time unless the only way to make people come down is to go through what they want. They want to have to express their uh, representation. Their, then they can put them in account. They ask them what they do. They, their representative, and that will make uh, the beginning or the first step in democracy. If that happen, I think that will come right. the, the general mood in the Egyptian street and people will come down and uh, nobody can, you can see from uh, Mr. Tantawi, he's the last man in the world uh, would like to have to rule Egypt. And the Egyptian count, the military council is complex enough they cannot take the job of running right. Egypt at the moment. Okay. Then, with the guarantee of the council, the only way is to just proceed and put forward, or mm -hmm. as it's been said, schedule the election, then people can be uh, busy of doing mm -hmm. the election and go forward f toward democracy. Okay, if I could just put this question to Mr. Yehya Ghanem now in Cairo. Mr. Yehya Ghanem, if you can hear me, uh, w what do you think about what has the military council done up until now? Do you think that Tantawi is just coming up with excuses? What's led them to delay to have, a, not in six months, but more, more than that, to come up with the new government? Do you think that, as some are saying, the military council is actually not after the ideals of the revolution, but trying to keep the former regime. What, what kind of an accusation do you think that is? Mr. Yehya Ghanem. What do I think about the chances of what? What do you think about accusations that the military rulers are actually part of a counter-revolution? Well, if I, if I heard you correctly, uh, if you're talking about the future of the revolution, I, I believe that the revolution never ended. It never stopped. I mean, what's happening these days now, it's not a new revolution. It's not a new revolution, new wave of revolution. It is a continuing revolution since January uh, 2010. So uh, I, I believe that this won't stop until certain demands are met. And I guess, uh, I, I believe that the least of the demands that should be met is uh, a new government, a fully powered government, fully mandated government, uh, with uh, a, f a wide spectrum of political, of political life represented in it. Uh, uh, and uh, we need also the, uh, the military council to shy itself away from managing the country through, uh, throughout this transitional period. Uh, we need also uh, to speed up certain uh, 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 judicial things like uh, trial, the trials for the uh, people who corrupted the political life and the economic life in Egypt uh, during the last 30 years. We need a lot of things, a lot of things to cool down uh, the, the, the public and also uh, to make it feel as uh, like, I mean, the, the, right. the revolution paid that the revolution page. Okay, uh, and Mr. Jamal Wakim, let's put this question to you as well. A major issue now, uh, Mr. Tantawi raised that issue himself as well, was trust, public trust in the military rulership. Do you think that that trust has been too much tainted now for the military rulers to be able to stay in power? Are they going to face maybe the same fate as Mr. Mubarak faced? Because we know now that the Egyptian people are quite confident in their power. Definitely. Uh, the more the, the crackdown on demonstrators continues, the more uh, a new leadership will be able to elaborate a new program. Uh, definitely the revolution is uh, continuing. Uh, I think that the, uh, the, uh, we are witnessing one of the greatest revolutions in history. The, this Egyptian revolution will, as the, the Bolshevik revolution before it, declared the beginning of the 20th century, as the uh, French revolution declared the beginning of the 19th century, 
Now this revolution is declaring the beginning of the 21st century and its impact and uh, it will influence the course of events not only in Egypt but throughout the Middle East and throughout the world. What we are witnessing in the West, in the United States, in Europe, the demonstrations, or, uh, right. the, the, all these are part of this revolution and the core of this world mm -hmm. revolution, global revolution is being right. the Egyptian revolution now. Okay, Mr. Yehya Ghanem, if I can have your final remarks before the show ends, if you can hear me. Uh, Mr. Yehya Ghanem, do you think now that uh, the military council has lost its position among the public? Say it again, please. Do you think that the military rulership has lost its position among the public? No, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I, I believe that the council still maintains uh, credibility and confidence throughout uh, big segments of the society and the public as well. The fact that there are certain segments, and uh, well, of course, I mean, we cannot ignore those segments, but the fact that some of the segments uh, have uh, some suspicions over the intentions of the council doesn't mean that uh, the council lost the majority of the confidence of the public. I would appeal for the council to the council to enhance and to strengthen such credibility throughout this, those segments that uh, they, 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 are, they got to be suspicious uh, recently over its intentions and uh, the regaining the credibility is through uh, measures and concrete measures and clear measures and right. I've mentioned some of those measures before and also to uh, draw a road map, a clear road map both political and economic right. uh, to calm down the fears and the concerns of the public. Okay, we've run out of time. A big thank you Ted, to Mr. Yehya Ghanem joining us there. Uh, live from Cairo, also Mr. Mohammed Ghanem with the Muslim Brotherhood who was with us from London and in Beirut political analyst Mr. Jamal Wakim. Thank you so much gentlemen for being with us. We've run out of time from me, Omar Lesgi and the rest of the team in Tehran. Until our next program, it's goodbye.